Hi, it's Paul here. Uh, this video is intended to help you to help your web designer uh, by specifying the things that you want on a new website. Um, very often when we're talking with a potential new website client, gaining an understanding of exactly what the client wants from their new website takes a bit longer than it probably ought to. And the reason for that is for those who've never been through the process before, they don't yet understand what it is that a web designer needs to know in order to begin. Um, and it's also the case that some people find it difficult to even contemplate the process of having a website built for them because they worry about what their input might need to be or what they might have to sign up for with the, the web design company. So this video and the accompanying checklist is intended to guide anybody who wants a website built for them. It will give you an idea of what a website designer or agency needs to know uh, before they can start. So with that in mind, these are some of the questions that you'll need to be ready to answer. Now when I do this work, uh, I do it with a checklist and as I say, I'll supply a checklist from the Webwiser website. But these are the things that we would cover at a minimum. So the first thing would be, tell me about your business. You can't build a website for somebody unless you know uh, something uh, about the intent of, of the website and if it's a business you need to know uh, what the services are, what the unique selling proposition are, is, um, what it is that the business owner thinks is special uh, about their bus uh, business. And I often begin that process by asking for three adjectives from you to describe your business. Uh, and those words that you come up with are often very telling uh, about the way that you primarily see your business. The next thing we'd need to know about is your potential customer or clients. What are their values? What do they want to hear about from you? What would sell them on your services? When somebody comes to your website, you've got a tiny amount of time to impress them and you have to answer this what's in it for me question. You have to give them a reason to delve deeper into your website. So, you know, that's important for us as website designers to know something about the people that you want to attract to your site. Next question, uh, do you have a slogan or a tagline? Now this often goes near to the logo and it will be, um, you know, a sentence. You don't want it to be too vague. Um, something like working with you because all, all companies work with you don't they instead it's better to try to offer a specific benefit as in we guarantee our workship uh, workmanship for five years or trusted solicitors click here to read what our customers say about us um, those are the kinds of things that uh, will draw people into your site because you're you're going some way to answering their questions. So that can be a tagline near the logo or it can be um, some kind of banner uh, near to the top of your website but something that you, you need to come up with something that will appeal to the people who you want to look at your website. The next question is what do you want your website to achieve? Are you looking to get direct sales from your website for instance? Is it going to be an e-commerce website? Or are you really looking to to have the website help you to achieve branding? Um, or perhaps are you looking to build an email list so you can conduct email marketing campaigns? Uh, it could be one of those, it could be all of those, or it could be something different. But we need to, as uh, website designers, we need to understand what you're looking to get from your website. For the purpose of your website, do you need any specific calls to actions? Uh, I'm thinking in terms of buttons that might say things like uh, contact us now, buy here or sign up for free webinars, that kind of thing. Can you tell us about other websites that you like? So, you know, the easiest way to get an understanding of what you're looking for in terms of aesthetics for your website is if you have been to other websites and spotted uh, things that you particularly like and that you might like to emulate. It's generally not a good idea to just say to a website designer, go out and create me something wonderful because that designer may very well 
come up with something that 80 percent of people really like 10 percent might be indifferent but 10 percent might absolutely hate the design and you might be part of that 10 percent so it's a safer bet to scour the web a little bit and come come up with some designs that you can show to your designer and say i like this don't copy this but at least come up with something that's rather similar to this have you decided on a particular color theme uh, you can specify colors exactly by using uh, a website called colorpicker.com uh, you can go there pick a color that you like and define it by its hex code that's a, a six uh, digit and letter code uh, which is something that designers understand and work with frequently but by going to that site colorpicker.com and uh, specifying the website uh, the hex code you can absolutely tie down the color precisely so there's no doubts in the designer's mind as to what you want in terms of color what page style would you like well if you look at these uh, templates here you get the idea of what I'm talking about top uh, top left there in the picture there's a banner at the top uh, there's navigation underneath and then on the left hand side there's a sidebar you've got uh, the the, uh, the main page in the middle and on the right hand side there's another sidebar uh, and at the bottom there's another nav navigation bar now a website like that where you've got two sidebars left and right implies you've got plenty of material to fill those sidebars so if you're a small company or it's just a beginning website you may not have all that much material uh, m yeah, material and, and, and things to go onto your website uh, is something that very often comes along later um, second version there in the middle top top middle it has just one navigation bar on the left top right one navigation bar on the right and so on so um, your website designer will help you with this question um, but if you've got any specific preferences or particular ideas on how you want your uh, web pages to be laid out this is another thing that a website designer uh, will be asking you about do you have a logo uh, if you have a logo that's great otherwise do you want your web designer to come up with a logo for you uh, again you want some strong ideas on colors um, you will want a logo that probably goes on your website and on letter letterheads you want something that's transferable to say uh, Facebook and Twitter as well because you want cross-platform cross branding that's an important thing to have if you've got no idea on on logo designs an easy place to get ideas is simply to go to Google and then go Google images and search for let's say you're a plumber search for plumbers logos and you'll see loads of plumbers logos um, pop up on the screen and again you can use those as examples to show to your designer obviously you don't want a direct copy of somebody else's logo but you can say I want something a bit like this or I want something like this but change such and such a thing so that's Google Images uh, for, for, your <laughs> for your inspiration next question how many pages do you want and what will they be so you may not know all the pages that you want from uh, from the get-go but nevertheless uh, you've probably got an idea on some that you know you want um, typically of course you'd have a, ha a home page an about page a contact page a products page if you have products a testimonial page maybe a picture gallery and so on um, on the contact page on the subject of the contact page what details do you want on that page generally the more details you put on the better since uh, it enhances credibility people prefer to deal with persons or companies that supply a telephone number for instance and an address even if it's your home address if you're a small company and a picture of you if you're a director or a company proprietor because it all helps to add credibility it pays not to hide yourself if you can uh, bear to put you put yourself and, and and you know those details on the website I recommend that you do it because you'll probably get more business as a result of doing so uh, also on your contact page contacts page do you want a Google map an embedded Google map you may not want that if you've got uh, a small business that you're operating from home 
um, but if it's something that people uh, if it's a business that people need to come and visit then probably you would want a map do you already have pictures for your website by and large professional pictures are best uh, that's to say taken by professional photographers particularly for uh, websites for say restaurants or if you want you know pictures of, of the food that's served in restaurants for the menu um, and if you are a manufacturer uh, you know you obviously want it, or it, it's obviously better to have professionally taken shots uh, of the items that, that you produce there can be exceptions to this I think sometimes uh, trades websites can can be enhanced by pictures of uh, people genuinely working uh, uh, in say oily overalls it can show that you're you're an honest guy doing a, a, an honest job and, and that can be comforting to to some site visitors but that has to be your decision do you want an animated image slider is another question they image sliders you often see them at the top of a web page uh, they can look great generally they definitely want to uh, you know employ professional photographs um, and very often you'll get them from a stock image site such as uh, iStock Photo or Photolia.com there, there are loads of them about uh, most of them have wide selections of images and they can represent all, all, all uh, manner of uh, businesses with the images that they have available if you do decide to have an image slider um, you would then have to decide how many images what kind of timing you want the slider set out that's all changeable later there's no problem to change the timing um, but do you want messages written on the images and do you want the uh, images to be clickable so that if you had a, a photograph come up say of one model of car uh, you could click it and go to a page that would tell you about that model or um, you could allow the slider to run on and click on a different page and that would tell you about another model of car so that's something else to think about image sliders and that that would be a question that we would ask you um, are there any other materials that you would want to appear on your websites so that could be drawings sketches cartoons maps uh, or files to download so uh, are there any other things that you know that you want somewhere on the website and lastly uh, oh, we covered that one do you already have a domain name now um, if you don't then there's a question of are you going to purchase it or do you want your website designer to purchase the domain name either way the website designer designer or agency will want to, to log into your account probably so that they can get access um, to the uh, domain name servers uh, to tell them where your website is is located to supply an IP address so those are probably most of the questions that I would ask to ask somebody who's um, just about to have a website built so that just about wraps this up I hope the the list of requirements from you hasn't been too daunting uh, you can find a detailed checklist on the webwiser.com website uh, if you're watching this video from YouTube you can find a link to the webwiser site and details of where to find the checklist immediately beneath that video uh, I hope this has been of use to you